How do you tell the difference between circumcenter, incenter, centroid, and orthocentroid? So, the first thing about the circumcenter is that the, circ the circumcenter is the center point that you see here. And what makes it a center is that circum means that there will be a circle circumscribing this triangle. So, in other words, circumscribing means that the vertices of this triangle ABC are on the circle. Not in the circle, not outside, but on the circle. Now, when you see a circumcenter picture, it will not it will not be usually accompanied by a circle. But you should understand that most of the uh, that all the time you will see a circle. You should imagine a circle circumscribing that triangle. Okay. So for this reason, uh, notice that circumcenter is the center of the circle, of the circle, and that's why all these are radiuses. Okay, from this point, circumcenter point Z to the C is a radius, AZ is a radius, and ZB is a radius. And since, since there's only one radius, that is why these three segments inside this triangle are congruent. So what I'm saying is that AZ is congruent to BZ, BZ is congruent to CZ, and AZ must be congruent to CZ as well. Okay, so that should be clear. Now what else? What else is there besides that? Notice that ZY, XZ, and, and uh, ZM are perpendicular. Right, so that's another property that you should be aware of. XZ is perpendicular to CA Okay, ZY is perpendicular to BC and ZM is perpendicular to AB. Okay, now also uh, it's not just perpendicular, XZ, ZY, and ZM are perpendicular bisectors meaning that not only they are perpendicular to AC, that they break up AC, BC, and AB into two equal parts. Right? So in other words, what happens is that AX becomes congruent to XC. Uh, CY becomes congruent to BY. And AM becomes congruent to MB, or BM I should say, maybe better. Okay, so these properties will help you solve numerous problems uh, dealing with a circumcenter. And again, you will not see a circle usually, you will just see a uh, point that is indicated as a circumcenter. Now you will have to deduce that the point it will be a circumcenter. So whenever you see, let's say, perpendicular relationship indicated here, and whenever you see at the same time bisect, uh, bisected segments like AC is divided into two equal parts, same, th same thing for BC and same thing for AB, you know immediately that you're talking about a circumcenter. So you will have to imagine a circle circumscribing this triangle and as a result you will have to realize that AZ, CZ and BZ will be congruent. Okay, because they are really the radiuses of the circle circumscribing this triangle. Now with the in center it's the other way around. Okay, the keyword here, the the keyword in this whole in center word, the part of that is going to be in. So in signifies that there will be a circle inside, right? So the uh, the circle is not circumscribing the triangle this time, it is actually inscribed. So inscribed means that the points X, Y, and M are on the circle and also on the triangle, on the edges of the triangle, right? So X is on the edge of the triangle, Y is on the edge of the triangle, M is on the edge of the triangle, but there are also points on the circle, right? So this is the in center. The in center is still going to be the point Z. And what makes it special is that, as you can see, Z is the center of the circle. Right? Just like the Z was the center of the circle that was circumscribing the triangle in the circumcenter, 
uh, case. In this case, in the in-center case, Z is also the center of the circle, but the circle is inscribed inside the triangle. So as a result, you see that XZ is congruent to ZY because, again, these are radiuses of the circle. Okay, ZY is congruent to ZM and ZM is congruent to Z XZ. Okay, so these are the properties that you should know. Now, also notice that um, there's more. Notice that there's again perpendicular relationship. Okay, and it's true that uh, you can treat AC as a tangent line to the circle. Okay, and whenever there's a tangent line, the point of tangency is going to be the x, y, and m. And whenever there's a point of tangency, whatever uh, uh, you, you, will, you will realize that these lines that are tangents, respectfully, any segment that you draw to those lines will be perpendicular to those tangent lines. Right? So AC, uh, ZX will be perpendicular to AC, ZY is perpendicular to BC, ZM is perpendicular to AB. Right? So let's indicate that. So XZ is perpendicular to AC. Um, and, and by the way, it's the same relationship as you've seen before. Right? You can see it's the same thing. We're basically copying down the same thing. So ZY is perpendicular to BC. And ZM is perpendicular to AB. Okay, so these are, and uh, and I will separate these cases from each other, so you will see different properties and you won't mix them up. Now the third property that you should see is that there are no perpendicular bisectors, right? These are not per these are not bisectors, but they're perpendicular, right? X, C, X, Y, and Z, M are not bisectors. They don't bisect A, C, and B, C, and 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 A, B into two equal subsegments, but they're perpendicular to these segments, right? That's why we we indicated that. But the last property here that you should realize is that we have angle bisectors, okay? So what it means is that when whenever you draw a segment from the in center to the respective vertices of the triangle, you will have created uh, three pairs of equal angle measures. Right? So what it does is that angle XCZ is congruent to angle uh, YCZ. Right? And another one is uh, these two are congruent too, and that's why you, you see them indicated in different colors. Be sure that you understand that these are unique pairs, right? There's a unique pairs. They, they may not necessarily equal each other in measure, but inside, within the same pair, within that pair that we're talking about, the two triangles are, the, the two angles are congruent. Okay, so the next one is going to be YBZ, Y. BZ is congruent to angle MZB. And the last one is going to be uh, ZAM is congruent to ZAX. Okay, so these are the three properties that you should r recognize. And again, this circle like in the circumcenter case, will not always be visible. In fact, it will never be visible. You will have to identify what it is. Usually, what they will give you is um, going to be the three pairs of congruent angles. So you will immediately know that you're talking about angle bisectors. And you will be given most likely the um, perpendicular indications here. So you know immediately you're talking about in center. Okay, in center mostly uh, covers the perpendicular relationship here and the angle bisectors here. Okay, now the next one is a centroid. Centroid is 
much easier usually to recognize because just like the circumcenter, the centroid will have three pairs of equal subsegments. So let's indicate that. So AX is going to be congruent to XC. CY is going to be congruent to YB or BY, let's say. And then uh, AM is going to be congruent to BM. Okay, let's separate that. That's one fact. Now the next one you should realize is that these are medians. AY, BX, and CM are medians. Medians uh, make it possible to draw segments from vertices A, B, and C in such a way that you end up in the midpoint of each side. Okay, so you let's say you start drawing the median from A, you draw it in such a way that you wind up in the midpoint Y, the midpoint of B, C, right? That's why you will have created two equal subsegments, B, Y, and C, Y, and the same thing for all three sides and the respective vertices. Okay, which is why this fact is taking place. Now, what makes it special about the medians? Medians make it special is that uh, the distance from the um, from the centroid here to uh, to the midpoint in this case y is going to be one third the entire distance from a from the vertex to that uh, to that point y on the edge. Right, so what I'm saying is that ZY is going to be one-third of AY. And the same thing in the other two cases. XZ is going to be one-third of the entire distance, the entire segment BX, or XB, I should say, XB. And now finally, um, Z, uh, ZM ZM is going to be precisely one-third of the entire segment CM, the entire median CM, or we should say MC. Okay, so that's that's uh, another fact. And really there is nothing else that is uh, particularly interesting. Notice that the difference between the centroid situation and the circumcenter is that while you have the same uh, three pairs of um, uh, equal subsegments, right? Each side is divided into two equal parts, just like in the circumcenter, but there's no perpendicular relationship, right? There's no perpendicular relationship here. CM is not perpendicular to AB. BC, uh, uh, AY is not perpendicular to BC, and BX is not perpendicular to AC, okay? So you have to tell, that's a great way to tell the difference between um, the circumcenter situation in the center. And also notice that Whereas we hold this relationship true for the medians, right? XZ takes one third of the entire BX. Uh, ZY, ZX, and ZM are not equal, all right? Which can tell you the difference between the in center, right? When, when, when we had ZM, ZX, and ZY equal, in this case, you will not have that relationship, right? In other words, these three are not going to be true in the in the median case, in the centroid case. All right, and the centroid, another name for that is the center of gravity. Right? There's another name for that center of gravity is the centroid. Now the Orsa center is going to be a pretty straightforward case. In the Orsa center, we call the BX, AY, and CM, we call them the altitudes. The altitudes are drawn in such a way that Bx will be perpendicular to AC, and the Bx is drawn from the vertex to the uh, edge of uh, AC here, to one of the edges of this uh, triangle, and it will be perpendicular to AC. And the same thing for the other vertices that you draw the altitudes from. Always perpendicular relationship to the opposite side. Okay, so in other words, Bx is going to be perpendicular to AC, uh, AY is going to be perpendicular to BC, and then MC or CM is going to be perpendicular to AB. 
Okay, and, uh, and notice that's the only thing that's possible here. Uh, the relationship with the thirds will not be possible like it was in the, in the median case, in the centroid case. Okay, so that relationship is not possible. Also, uh, there are no perpendicular bisectors, right? These are perpendicular, but they don't bisect the AC, BC, and uh, AB in the same way that um, circum uh, circumcenter did. Right, and also the in center, uh, you you cannot uh, inscribe a circle here, right? You will not have zm xz and xy distances equal like it was in the in center. Okay, so that should be clear. So the only thing that makes orthocenter unique here is the fact that you're talking about the point of concurrency for the altitudes, right? Point of concurrency means the point at which all three altitudes meet in a single point, which is in this case the orthocenter. So if you have these facts straight, you will be able to f solve many, many problems involving solving for x, let's say, you know, um, uh, various algebraic problems that involve, um, you know, the reference to knowledge of these four unique shapes. And keep in mind that circumcenter and orthocenter, what's special about them is that they can sometimes fall outside the triangle, right? Because imagine that you can, you can draw a circle, for example, here, and you can draw a triangle in such a way, you can circumscribe the triangle in such a way that that the uh, that the center of the circle that the center of the circle may lie outside. Okay, I can even draw a better example. Let's say like this. Okay, this is and this happens when there is an obtuse triangle. Okay, obtuse means one of the angles here will measure more than 90 degrees. So as you can see the center, the uh, circumcenter will be here which will be the center of the circle that circumscribes this triangle. So as you can see the circumcenter in this case will be outside the given triangle. Right? And that's possible. And the same thing with orthocenter. The orthocenters, if the triangle is obtuse, can be outside. Now there's a there's a whole method of finding the orthocenter whenever it's outside the circle. I'm gonna and I'm gonna you know I'm gonna help you find that. But um, and keep in mind that in the circumcenter situation, you will still have um, segments that you draw from the circumcenter to the sides. It will still divide it into two equal parts, right? So what I'm saying is that you draw a segment to the edge to one side of the triangle it will divide it will divide these parts these uh, these subsegments into two equal parts right and if you draw another one to another side like this right and keep in mind that there will still be a perpendicular relationship in each case like that and there's one more possible, like that, also perpendicular relationship. So you will create three pairs of equal subsegments, right? And this this is the last one. One, two, three, right? So th those uh, properties of the circumcenter still hold, right? Perpendicular relationship to each side still holds, and also the perpendicular bisector relationship holds, right? So not just perpendicular, but bisectors as well. Right, as you can see this one. Now in the orthocenter it's more tricky, usually it involves the graph paper and I'm going to make a separate video how to find the orthocenter outside the circle and how to use graph paper for that. You will see how it works. It has to deal with right angles, it has to deal with lots of different right angles and techniques associated with that. Okay, so I will devote an entire video to finding the orthocenters located outside the triangle. Okay. And again, that's possible when the triangle is obtuse, like in the situation described here. So thanks for watching. I hope this was helpful. Please subscribe using the bottom right uh, sub sign or any other method you wish. And I'll see you in the next video.